Hey, how's it going everyone? GC Performance here, back with another video. Today I'm gonna to be showing you guys how to install a tubular tire onto a tubular rim. Uh, there are two different uh, versions of doing this. You either have the tape that you can install onto the rim and just basically tape the tire to it, or you have the classic way of putting the glue on there. Uh, they make two different versions. There's an aluminum version or a carbon fiber version. Depending on the rim, you have to choose the correct uh, platform for that. But uh, today we're gonna to be installing it on a CLX 50, Revolve CLX 50 is a tubular rim. Main reason why is because we got a hell of a deal on it and also just wheels are impossible to find. So we got these tubular wheels inside here and we are going to be installing some S-Work uh, turbo all around tubular tires using the tape today. So I'm gonna show you the whole process of it. We're gonna install the tape on the rim. I'll go over everything. We gotta install the, um, the uh, stem extenders on there as well to fit these deep dish wheels and I'll show you the process of it. You guys will probably never have to do this yourself, and if you guys ever do struggle with it, bring it to your local bike shop. They can install it for you pretty quickly. Uh, one thing to know with tubular tires, after you do kind of set this, this platform, the tape, or even this platform right here, it's always best recommended to not ride on it after 24 hours. Let the uh, adhesive cure for about 24 hours, let the glue cure for about 24 hours as well. But today, we're gonna be looking at the tape, and I'll show you guys how to do it. So without further ado, I'm gonna stop it, and we'll get into the tire installation. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna start with a tire. We're going to unpackage it. And first thing we wanna do is get our valve uh, installed onto this tube because it is a deep dish wheel. If it is not a deep dish wheel, you won't really have to worry about this, but basically we're just going to take this valve right here and we have a little tool right here, this little zip tool, a little four and five. We're gonna take the head of this and we're gonna get it like that, lefty loosey it. Take out the valve core of this Presta valve. Then we're going to open up the valve extenders that came with the rims, which is great. It's a nice little plus. Because they are tubulars, you're always gonna need a valve extender in here. Benefit to tubular tires, I mean, nowadays, clincher wheels are being ran, even though they're running the tours now. But tubular tires are ran mainly for race day and, and for races because of the fact that they have that, that um, the the insurance that nothing will happen you're not gonna get a blowout if you do get a flat it won't blow off the rim or anything like that so when these pros are bombing down hills or or at these high-end speeds they want to make sure they have a security of, of going to corners quickly and stuff like that so they want the extra security of that um, whereas if you're running a tubeless tire or clinchers and stuff like that there is blowouts that can happen tire can roll off you know nowadays they're getting better and better but that was a whole thing behind it back in the day so yeah we have our valve coin here skinny side Goes in first, righty tighty. And if you really want to, you can go ahead and put a Teflon tape, like a plumber's tape in there to make it tight. But these these valves extenders on here that came with the, with the wheels have a rubber seal inside there. So we don't have to worry about that. And same right here. See that like that little rubber piece right there on the end? That is going to help create that seal. But back in the day, we used to use like a Teflon tape or something like that around the threads to create a better seal. Cool. So we get this on here, tighten this up, tighten this up, and now this is tight. So now next step will be to get this tire onto the rim itself, and I'm going to blow it up and let it sit there for a little bit to kind of stretch it out. Okay, so now we have the Velox tape. This does work for two wheels, so it's just a long piece of tape like this and a tape roll. Pop this sucker open like that. Open up our packaging. It's gonna be a pain in the ass, of course it is. Get her out. And boom, get it, it's all out of packaging. It's good to go. Very easily done, as you can see, no efforts at all. Get a pair of scissors next to you as well because you're gonna to have to cut this tape. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is you're going to want to, now again, granted, I know, let's address the elf in the room. I have a truing stand here. It makes my life a lot easier, but we're gonna to go to the valve hole is right here and we're going to start on one opposite end of the valve hole you guys over here actually let's crank you up real quick let's see what we got here mm -hmm. and we'll go back into here so valve hole is here so what we're going to do is open this find where it starts at again we're going to find the valve hole which is right here and we want to get as close as we can to that hole and the tape 
as close as, or as much as we can in the middle. You want to make sure it's centered. Then you're just going to pull it taut all the way through. So again, like I said, I know this makes it easy because I have a a chewing stand. Let's see if I can get this real quick. I'm going to pull it tight and pull it on taut. Pull it tight. Push it down. And also with doing these, it's always easiest the first time doing this. Changing a flat tire, you have to rip the tire off from the adhesive. And then also you have to rip the uh, extra glue off here as well. So you want to make sure that whenever you are reapplying tape, if there is extra tape on there, you want to go ahead and remove all that stuff before. So keep that in mind too. So the first time is always going to be the easiest time doing this. But it is doable by anyone at home. You don't need a truing stand, but it does help out a lot. So we get to keep on going. And again, I'm making sure this is tight. I'm making sure this is going down into the channel of it. You see how we're coming up to it now? Right there. So we're gonna go here. I'm gonna go right here, grab our scissors. Make a cut. Put the excess tape somewhere where you're gonna be able to get it again because we're gonna use it. I'm gonna pull this thing down tight. And you wanna go ahead and go throughout the whole process. You wanna make sure that you push this down firmly everywhere. That way you get a nice even thing. Next step, we reinstall a tire get it back on there and then i'll show you what to do as well all right i'm in the spot that i love the most back at it uh a lot of stuff happened with customers of that it's okay now we're back into it um so what we're gonna do is we, we have the tape on here it's a double side tape so we're gonna take part right here we're gonna get our nail underneath i bite my nails kids so don't bite your nails it makes it a lot harder to peel tape but what you want to do is you want to peel this freaking tape back right next to the valve hole. I might have to go get a screwdriver because obviously you can see I'm struggling. Oh, nice, no, I got it. This is real world stuff, right? There's no edits here. Like that, just a little bit. Un poquito. Then we go on this side, do the same thing. I'm just gonna peel this off here. And then we're gonna be able to put our tire on this tube Get right here. Come on. Come on. Work with me. Work with me. I got it. I know. Trust me. I'm sorry, guys. Hold on. Okay, I'm not even going to lie. I got a screwdriver. A little flathead. Just peel back a little bit. Makes it easier. All right, cool. So then we take our tire. Again, we want to make sure that we have the right direction going on here. So this is a directional tire. I'm going to peel this back like this. We're going to put our tire on. Drive side first. <laughs> Look at you, little sneak a snag. Got a little sneak a snag on And we want both the plastic flaps on the same side. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna have both the plastic flaps on the non-drive side. So one here, one here, and we're gonna put our tire on. So, you guys get to see me work a tubular tire. The idea is we're gonna put this on here, we're gonna roll it onto this rim, and once it's rolled on there, we're gonna blow it up to pressure, then we're gonna move that tape. Oh my goodness. So, all in all, I know this video is probably gonna be like 10 minutes long but it'll probably take a lot less time if I didn't have all these interruptions. You get into a smooth rhythm of things. That's just the way the cycling industry goes. Okay, get the sew up part on the glue. Make sure we're good to go here. Strain it out. Cool, I'm gonna go put some air in here. Be right back. Okay, so 
We got air on the tire. We have the plastic tabs right here and here. Again, the wheel is inside a truing stand, but you don't actually need the wheel to be in a truing stand to do this trick. You can see we have the plastic tabs on both sides. I went ahead and put air inside the tire. There's about 60 PSI in here, um, enough to kind of where I can move it around, but also um, enough where at the point it's gonna have enough pressure on that rim. So we're gonna pick a side. So we see right here, let's see. So you can show you see those plastic tabs right there. So that's the plastic tabs we're going from. We're gonna start at one side, we're gonna go all the way around. So basically gently pull. A little bit more PSI, a little bit more pisses, and just basically let the thing pull out. And this is the part where you want to do it. You want to have it taut enough to a point where it's going to give you an even pull, but also not tight enough where you point you break it. If you do break it, you do have another point to go ahead and start from, but just be kind of aware of it. Try not to pull on it for too long. You always kind of want to regrip and restructure your grip on here. That way you get a nice even pull each time. And every time you pull this away, the adhesive is making contact with that tubular tire, which will then cure. And then you'll have yourself a nice, fast tubular tire going in. Now remember, after doing this, it's recommended 24 hours. Now, do people follow that rule? I, I always tell people follow the rule. Do customers follow that rule? No. People come in here with flat tires all the time. I put this on for them. They go, oh, don't worry. I got like an hour. I got like... I got like a 10 mile ride home, don't worry about it. And they'll just ride on home on the tubular tires at a slow speed. I never hear from them again, which is a good thing or a bad thing, I don't know. But just always be weary. The recommendation is 24 hours let it cure. That way to give us enough stick. Especially if you guys are in hilly areas descending, because this thing will roll right off if it doesn't cure enough. Okay, we're gonna close. Keep going, we're almost there. And then immediately once we're done, we're gonna pump this thing up to 110 PSI, or 120 really. Boom, tires on there. I'm very happy with that. We're good to go, there is nothing showing on there. You have the sew ups on there. Give me one second, I will go put some air in here. All right, so we got the tire in here all completed. We have the sew up on there, it's all glued on there. It's pumped up to 120 PSI and we'll let it sit overnight. He's all set. Um, you can see you have the little classic the sew up right there on each side to let you know that it is a tubular tire on there. Um, yeah, but is it worth it to go tubular in 2021? Uh, that's up to you. I mean, obviously a lot of the racers still ride tubulars just for that security. They're going at a lot higher speeds. They're torquing the bike way faster on sprints and stuff like that. They want the extra security that no roll-offs will happen or blow-ups will happen either. Um, but in this case, the guy got this, these wheels for a steal of a deal because they were tubular and specialized we're doing a closeout on. So he couldn't pass them up for, for what they were. And yeah, I mean, the, the flat tires are gonna be a headache if you do ever get flat tires because you have to change out the whole tire. Your bike will usually be out of commission for a day. Um, and not only do you have to pay for a new tire, it's not just a tube, you have to pay for a new tire. But the weight usually is gonna be a lot lighter in terms of, or back in the day, the reason why tubular tires were such a race day wheel was that the tubulars were such a lighter wheel. Um, clinchers couldn't come near to it. Uh, they didn't even have hookless rims out yet, but to, uh, the tubular tires were the race day wheel. Now with advances in modern style and the high income of Specialized, uh, they're able to, on all these wheel companies, they're able to make clincher wheels that are way more efficient in terms of um, lightweightness, efficiency in clincher tires, aerodynamics, everything like that. And the benefit is definitely to the consumer in terms of, you know, uh, not everyone's a racer. They want uh, easier flat changes and they want easier compatibility for the for the user as well so tubular tires I my personal thing would be no again this guy got these for about like a good solid I want to say almost 40 percent off so we couldn't pass up the offer but yeah that's gonna do it for this video guys let me know what you guys think about tubular tires if you guys are for them or against them uh, I think they look great and um, yeah thank you guys so much for watching and have a good day